couple of weeks in in preparation for this game, and and I thought that uh, they performed on the field. Our defense came out on fire, um, made some unbelievable plays, held them to 50-something yards rushing, two goal line stands inside the two or three, whatever that was. I thought Jason Matry's pick early was a symbol of where the defense was going to be uh, all day long and, and really gave the offense a chance to get going and establish the run. And of course, I thought we established the run. We ran for over 429 yards, roughly thereabout. And that was the number one rushing defense in the country, I mean, uh, in the conference, and number four or five in, in the country. And uh, we were able to rush for as many yards today as had been given up, um, they had given up all season. Um, you know, I have a lot of respect for NC State and Dave Dorn. I always have. Um, I think he's a fabulous coach, and I think they've got a really good program. And uh, our team and our coaches uh, knew going into this game that this was going to be a physical contest and that we were going to have to really bow up. And, uh, and our kids uh, responded unbelievable. Uh, our two running backs are offensive line and tight ends. I thought they did a fabulous job. Um, those backs were running through contact, running for plus yards, uh, kind of unstoppable looking. And uh, very, very proud of that. And uh, just super proud of our football team. Um, life is about responding. And uh, I thought that the, they, they responded out here unbelievably, stuck together, um, and, and did a fabulous, fabulous job. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, just wait for the mic to get up. Ooh, sorry, everybody. Kind of might sound like an afterthought, but just talk about Dennis managing the game yeah. and knowing when to get rid of the ball and making smart yeah. decisions. You know, Dennis did a fabulous job with that. In fact, he had a very critical first down on the long, whatever that 90-something yard drive we had that might have been the backbreaker that he managed to be able to go out there and uh, um, kept the ball and scrambled and ran and got just enough yardage for that first down. That was really a critical, critical first down. And Dennis has got really good toughness. Um, he had total poise and composure out there and was clearly in charge of that offensive unit. Coach, and I know in your heart of hearts you love to run the football. How much of this week's game plan was about just running the football or was it a byproduct of Dennis starting the game and you guys feeling that you might have needed to balance things up a little more? You know, honestly, no. I mean, we really had a great, a great game, pl game plan put together with wanting to be completely, you know, how we are. I mean, for the season we were like 65 35 and we wanted to keep minimally that ratio but when we started just running the ball like that I mean there's just we just weren't going to come off of that I mean that was uh, I've been around a fair amount of time that was an unbelievable uh, performance by the those guys and um, you just had to keep feeding them the rock at that point in time there just was no merit to not doing that you know and uh, and our team was totally locked into that you know now yes we did challenge our team that we're playing the number one run defense, and we need to go out there and bow up and run the football. If we were going to be, the, we were the number one rushing offense in the conference, we're, and whatever we are in the country, six or something like that. Well, we're going to go out there and we're going to act like it, and we did. Uh, what about Max? Uh, he had a huge game. Mm -hmm. He put the pressure on, I believe, uh, on the mm -hmm. pick six, and he had ten tackles. It seemed like he was all over the field. Yeah, how I think big he was. The game? Did he have, and how important was that for the defense? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, that's what I saw. I mean, I can't give you the details because, you know, it's hard from my vision point, but I saw him making an impact on the field, exactly what you just said. And Max is one of those guys. He's a special guy. Um, he has a laser focus um, like the great players have. Uh, his preparation, his intensity uh, is incredible, actually. And um, so um, it shouldn't be shocking because that's the kind of kid he is. Um, but he, he certainly had a huge impact on the defense. You kind of had the assist earlier in the week where it was a pretty important first down that occurred. Mm -hmm. Kind of what gave you that feeling this week? And, uh, and what was you able to do to see when NC State, that's a really stout run defense, mm -hmm. clearly it's a negative back there. I just felt like I think I told you during the week that he's a great back. And he, while he has had some great games and he's up there nationally and all that, I still felt like, you know what, he's an elite player and, and he hasn't had that breakout game yet. He's had some unbelievably great games and those grind them out games, but I thought you started to see what I consider that as a breakout game today. And you know he's going to have it. It's just a matter of when it was going to happen. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm super jacked that it happened today. You know? He's mad at it in a large sense. Like, I think he's hitting like 75 yards from the school record, two touchdowns from the school record or whatever. Um, what is, where does this put him in, in those numbers, put him in kind of the sort of pantheon of, of running backs? And does it matter to you at all? You know what I mean? Like 
I mean, I think if you talk, I'm sure you'll talk to AJ. I'm sure what he's going to tell you is what matters is, you know, um, his team, um, his teammates, and uh, being able to do what he has to do to help our team win. And um, he's he's that kind of guy, uh, centered guy, and uh, you know it's going to be all about one one week at a time. Get prepared and move forward. But right now, um, it's about this game and, and 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 about the focus of our team on this game. I think the defense set the tone for the day. I just believe we came out on fire on defense, and I think they set the tone for the day because, you know, just trying to roll a Dex it through my head really quickly. I mean, we had that drive, went down to the five, went backwards with a few penalties. But, uh, you know, our defense playing the way they did gave us an opportunity to kind of keep banging on that rock a little bit. And, and you have to be able to do that if you want to really run like we ran. So I just think the def defense did a fabulous job and set the tone for the game and gave the offense the opportunity to build and generate that kind of run attack. Coach, talk a little bit about the importance of the bye week coming off the Louisville game. How important was that bye week for you guys, knowing you had NC State coming in, knowing you had a tough stretch coming up? How important was it for you guys to just get back to the fundamentals and just refocus a little bit? I mean, it was extremely. We, we had a few goals for the bye week. One of which, quite frankly, was we had a bunch of guys that had a lot of schoolwork had to get done. And, uh, you know, um, just being truthful with you, you know, our, our guys, uh, you know, they're challenging the classroom. And, and, and like everybody here at BC, and, and, and this time of year, there's a lot of reading and a lot of homework and a lot of stuff had to be done. So we wanted to make sure our guys had an opportunity to get to, to be able to handle that. I think the other thing was we wanted to go back and work on our fundamentals. I think that was very important to us. We wanted to look at some some players, some younger players. We wanted to get that done in the bye week. We wanted to look at our overall scheme, where we were, what we felt we could streamline, how we could make it simpler, how we, how we could become more efficient. And on offense, we spent an awful lot of time, honestly, trying to scheme our run game. It was a little bit different style of defense. We hadn't seen it yet, and there was really no film, enough film out there for us to view them playing anybody like us. And this defense is different for them. I don't have last year's tape to bank on. We spent an awful lot of time putting together the run attack against this defense. So those are the things we set out to do in the bye week. In the beginning of the bye week, get them some physical rest. We were mentally tired, and we were physically tired at that point. And so it was really, honestly, it came at an incredibly important time for us. I know, you know, sometimes some years more so than ours. That break for us, we really had to have that. And, and we were able to hit the reset button. And uh, I, I knew this week that we had an unbelievable amount of energy and intensity in our preparation. Let's take two more for, for Brad. What do you have, Mike? Uh, only six completions on the day, but uh, three of them went to Hunter Long, and he had some big plays again. He's mm -hmm. been doing that all year. He has. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about what he's bringing to the offense right now? Yeah, I mean, well, he's a, a gifted athlete. I mean, he's a six foot five, two hundred sixty pound guy that runs real fast, and uh, he's got great hands. Um, He's a playmaker. He's a good blocker, and, and he does all the other things well as well. But he's an explosive playmaker in a throw game. That's been fairly consistent. So, um, and that's what you need. You need to be explosive. You need to make plays. And uh, you know, we, he's he made he made two big screen catches for us that were huge. And um, he will he will continue to grow and develop. And given Steve, what's ahead next Saturday night uh, down in South Carolina? Uh, how important is it to establish that mentality on both sides of the ball in the trenches, knowing that? that test next week is going to be just that much tougher. Yeah, I mean, I think our guys are mature and, and know that we have to play at a high level. We're going to go on the road and play in a tough environment against an outstanding football team. And uh, what we have to do is keep the physicality that we had today. We have to, pl we have to play with, our, with who we are, and we're a physical football team. And it has to start there, uh, both sides of the ball. We've got to tackle hard. We've got to be aggressive on defense. And on offense, we've got to be very, very physical. And, and, and of course, we'll have to be much more balanced. But um, um, I think that we can grow from today. And, um, and we can move forward and have a great week of preparation and go down there and uh, just flat play real hard. Steve, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
kick off with Dennis Grossell first. Obviously, making your first career start is making your first career start, but how much nice is it just having AJ and David back there to make your life easier? I mean, it's a totally different, totally different than if you didn't have them with you. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're two really special backs. Um, you know, they both bring a similar but different asset to the table, um, and I'm confident with either one of them back there. And I know the entire offense is. It's a nice safety blanket to have back there. Um, you know, when I'm either not completing passes or we're struggling in the throw game, but um, you know, thankfully we didn't really need that today. Um, and I mean, they're. They're hard runners. They're physical. They they work hard, not just in you know run scheme, but pass protection as well, um, which probably goes unnoticed a lot of the time. Um, but, you know, they're incredible to have back there. Dennis, talk a little bit about the preparation process for you, going from a backup to starting. How was that for you this week, and how was the game in general for you, particularly at the start of the game? Right. Um, you know, the, the bye week helped having a little extra week of preparation. Um, you know, in ways it, it helped me prepare, obviously. In other ways, it was, you know, it was long. I wanted to get the game going. It's a long two weeks to prepare, knowing that what you have in store for you. Um, you know, the preparation, like Coach Adazio said, was a lot of, lot of run schemes. Um, you know, we, we, we were challenged up front and with the run game with how incredible their defensive front was. Uh, I think we answered the call pretty well and even brought it to them, in a, in a sense. Dennis, you briefly touched on it right there. Were you anxious? Nervous last night. I mean, knowing this was different than an emergency situation, you had a lot of time yeah. to think about this. Yeah, I would say there's a little, little extra nerves, um, but you know, the trust that's in the in that locker room right now is um, it's pretty special, um, both for me, both for the offensive line, the defensive line, everyone in the in the room there. Um, you know, it's pretty special, and that helped calm my nerves a ton. Obviously, the um, you know the pick six helps me <laughs> for sure, uh, gives me a little breathing room. Um, but, you know, like Max says all week, you know, we got your back. Uh, just play, be you, play. And, you know, they, that there's no better way to, you know, resemble that than to, you know, step out and make a play like that. What about the 51 yard pass to Hunter and how, when you see a tight end that wide open as a quarterback <laughs> making your first start at this level, how important is that for you to complete that and get a big, big gainer? Yeah, obviously the situation uh, called for, you know, a completion. We needed to move the chains a little bit. Um, to see that big frame so wide open, you know, a lot of times you don't really see him that wide open, but, you know, just get it anywhere near him, he's making the catch and running for it. Right, I would say definitely the momentum towards, uh, uh, let's go drive prior to, our drive when we drove all the way down and ended up with no points, uh, demoralizing. Um, you know, we, we need to come away with points in that situation. The penalties hurt us. Um, but you know, to run back into the huddle, to talk when we're writing things over, and to hear the crowd roar and look over and see that we're in the end zone with the ball, um, you know, it changes the entire momentum of the game. And coach was dead on when he said, you know, they set the tone. Um, we came out, um, didn't put points on the board, and they had our back. The scramble? Yeah. I think it was I think it was eighteen ninety nine yards right down the field. Um, it was just one of our drop back passes that you know looked for a completion. They uh, went through my entire progression all the way across. Uh, and at that point, it's either you know throw away and save it or try to make something happen. And, you know, there's a lane to, to my right. Made something happen, made a guy miss, and you know, I was fortunate enough to get the drive started really and get a first down. And coach said earlier in the week, just keep getting first downs, one first down at a time, and you know th that's put it in play. Anything else, for Dennis? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just glanced up early and I saw what was like five punts, two stops um, at the goal line uh, in the pick in the first nine drives. Um, and I was wondering, like, one, like, how much of that is just like tone setting? And then two, for you guys coming out, two weeks to think about like what happened two weeks ago. How much of this was like a trial run for you? Uh, yeah, we we definitely believe that this is a coming off of two losses. This is a game where we're 
we have a little extra chip on our ch our shoulder. We're a little bit pissed off. Uh, and uh, getting goal line stops is a huge momentum changer for, for any team. And so that, it was a great way to start the game. Uh, Coach Sheridan put together a great scheme this week. Uh, and uh, when it came down to the goal line, there was uh, guys in position to make plays. And, and, and uh, that helped our team today. Max, you mentioned that Coach Sheridan had a good scheme today. Talk about some of the uh, things that you guys did during the bye week to kind of shore up some of the issues you were having and, uh, uh, and to also talk about how you were able to turn things around and play what is arguably your best game of the season today. Uh, I think the bye week was great because we utilized the time to rest and recover, but we also went back to the basics defensively, fundamentals and stuff like that. But also the coaches had an opportunity. They had uh, five or seven to ten extra days to to scheme the other uh, the other opponent. And uh, if, if they call up the right plays and we do our job at a high level with the technique they teach us, uh, you know, it's really, uh, it's really a beautiful thing. It's like a machine because we're, football is a very simple game. Uh, coaches tend to uh, overcomplicate it, and even players do sometimes. But if you do your job uh, to the best of your ability, Coach Sheridan's uh, a brilliant guy who will put us in a position to make those plays. Max, I understand spring practice is a lot different, but what's it like to stop guys like AJ and David when they're on the other side of the ball? Oh, it's the greatest and, and, and worst practices in, in America <laughs> uh, because obviously AJ and David are big guys, strong guys. They run hard. They, uh, they run with their pads out. And so it's great to compete against that every day because it, it makes me better. Uh, and also, I, I have no... Uh, I have no... Uh, uh, Embarrassment saying that I get my bell rung a couple times too when I'm making contact with those guys. So it prepares me for a, a long season and, and I think it overall helps me to be uh, more durable. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They're, they're great backs. They run hard. Uh, I, I love them to death. So I can look up and see the numbers and at one point, I want to say third quarter, early fourth quarter, uh, it was 328 rushing yards to two. And I was <laughs> wondering if you realized that at any point in the middle of the game, you kind of ended. Uh, well, we went into halftime, uh, uh, and, and, and part of the uh, halftime adjustments was they, they had not been able to run the ball on us. So we knew uh, we, we were doing well stopping the run. But, uh, you, you know, during the game, uh, you, you, don't, you don't see the huge uh, margins of statistics that, that you see after. But uh, we felt like we did a, 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 an all right job stopping the run. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you. We'll go next is AJ Dillon. Who are you again? Always <laughs> Start here on the right. Yep. So, uh, Coach was saying earlier in the week that he had a hunch, he had a feeling that you had a breakout game in you. I was wondering if you, you mentioned that to you or it was just to us. And um, also, what did you see that kind of just. Did you have that same feeling, honestly? What did you see in the NC State defense last week? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously coming off the bye week, <clears throat> uh, we as a team had a chance to kind of catch our breath after those two losses we uh, took and uh, just kind of refocus and rebite. And, uh, I mean, watching film all week, I studied these guys. I re-studied. Like, I knew what every player was going to do. And so uh, I feel like that showed. Um, but, I mean, the offensive line came, and they blocked their butts off. And... Same in the receivers on some of those long runs that David and I had, uh, they're downfield blocking. And so as a whole, as a whole offense, I feel like we really showed that um, it doesn't really matter who we line up against or what statistic, statistical ratings or anything that people have. Uh, we're going to come uh, with everything we got. And uh, if we can play like that, we can play with anybody. AJ, talk a little bit about um, Dennis starting his mm -hmm. first game and, and how you guys rose up and accepted the challenge to back him up and make him feel comfortable and make him get into a rhythm early? Yeah, um, I would say one thing. Uh, I know he's our backup, but uh, Dennis is a natural-born leader. Um, so it's not, for, at least I don't know what's going on in his head. From what I saw, he, he didn't seem nervous. Um, obviously, it was his first start, and uh, that can be nerve-wracking. I remember my first start, I was nervous. But um, he came out there, and he uh, controlled the huddle. He uh, made the right calls, the right checks. And uh, I know he's only going to grow better. In a game like today, uh, AJ, when you have David back there going almost yard for yard mm -hmm. with you, 
What's that dy dynamic like uh, on the sidelines when, when the defensive yeah. is on the field? Are you guys talking on the sidelines? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <coughs> sorry. I mentioned before, uh, David is, as far as uh, sports have gone, he's the closest friend, brother, I would say. Um, there's nothing that separates us besides blood. And um, so that just to see him do what he does, uh, that makes me even more excited than when I score. Um, but definitely when we come to the sideline, we talk about, oh, the safety's diving at the legs. And even Pat Garwell, um, who uh, I'm not sure if he played today or not, but he also helps us out a lot. So our running back room, uh, you know, we, we take care of each other. Pat Garwell will come over and say, oh, I saw this while you guys were out there. So, um, and it all starts with Coach White, and we have that real family, uh, family ties in there. AJ, I understand you're probably a proud running back. You think you can break at any time or mm -hmm. you expect to. But is there a little bit of surprise how much success you guys had today running the ball? I don't know if surprise is the right word. Uh, I knew as a competitor, I know what the offensive line brings. I know what our run unit brings. And I know myself and I know David very well that we're competitors. And um, we heard, I don't even have Twitter, but I just kept hearing about the number one rush defense in the ACC. And not that it necessarily changed the game plan, but or that we had anything to prove. But when you're a competitor, you want to go up against the best. So if they're the best rush defense, we want to come with our best. And so that kind of got us going, I, I would say. And I mean, I, I had a feeling that today was going to be a great day, just the look in everybody's eyes. And But no, I wasn't expecting uh, what we did today. Nothing to do with my actual question. When did you get rid of Twitter? Uh, right before camp. Nice. Um, just to get distracted. Yeah. Up. Gotcha. Uh, and you still couldn't keep them up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So you came in like you remember the season like I don't care about numbers I care about like mm -hmm. availability dependability reliability yeah yet you're about 75 yards from setting school record for rushing yards and two touchdowns from setting the touchdown record mm -hmm. uh, what do those numbers mean to you as you get closer to it? so uh, yeah uh, I made it a point not to really care about individual stats and individual numbers and just being able to help the team in whatever way I could and that's something I do hold near and dear um, as far as this the career records coming up um, I mean. You look at the run, running history at BC, you see great backs, great offensive lines. Um, so, I mean, even this time that I've been, uh, like, been here, just being named, mentioned with the names that have come before me, it's an honor. And uh, so as I'm honing into them, I'm not in the snap, like, oh, let me get 75 or two touchdowns. But, um, you know, it's, it's an honor to just be up there with those guys. Um, some great backs have come before me, some great offensive lines, and uh, it's not an individual thing. David, how did you break out of that scrum and go for 54 yards? You were surrounded by white jerseys. I mean, the line, they, they kept blocking, they kept moving and everything. I ended up just finding a little hole slipping through and just burst through there. I said, but the line up front, they kept moving, kept moving to the second level. They started up front with the second level and they kept blocking their butts off. So with them, it made me burst um, how many yards ever was. How you doing? I mean, yeah, I say I feel like always every time I go on the field, I always feel like I have a um, point to prove. I feel I always tell myself I'm the best player on the field, just like anybody else would. So I just um every week, it don't matter what game it is and how many things I have did, I just always go out there, feel like I have a point to prove. Just play my game every time and just keep rolling. David, talk a little bit about your style versus AJ's. And I think you guys complement each other very well. Talk a little bit about that, but also talk a little bit about your relationship with AJ. AJ talked about that with us. But I want to get your side in terms of your relationship with him and how you feed off each other. Well, our, our style of run game, it's pretty the same, I want to say, but he's faster than me. I'm going to give him that. He's, he's, I'm, I ain't going to say way faster, but he's faster than me, though. But I feel like we have a stiff arm spin move. He probably have a better sti uh, spin move than me. But other than that, I feel like we're pretty similar to each other. But the relationship, it just, I couldn't explain it. Um, he's been a big brother to me when I came in here. He always took me under his wing. 
from my freshman year, taught me anything. Like we would always go to the side. We had come here late meetings. He just teach me the concept of every play, just run plays, pass um, protection. Always told me to trust my eyes, him and Coach White, and also the other running backs. So just me and him, his relationship is always like a big brother, his family member, and I love him. So I say with us too, it's just it's a great um, relationship. David, you just said he's faster, but are you going to remind him about your breakaway speed on those two long runs? I would tell him, I've been told him about the Louisville. Actually, my uh, freshman year, he was going to say, I don't have no breakaway speed. I was like, when I get over field, usually I don't get caught. But I said, I had to tell him about my little breakaway speed because on um, Louisville game, that's when you actually seen it. He's like, okay, you got a little bit of speed on you and everything. I've been telling him about my um, breakaway speed, though. <laughs> AJ's. I guess, what, two touchdowns and 75 yards away from setting school records. Those are pretty special records at a school that has such a great history of running backs. Are you aware of kind of not only AJ's, uh, you know, being on the precipice of some great history, but the, the tradition of running backs here at BC? Oh, yeah. So I went, um, during recruiting, I'll just, that's one thing I looked at, just the offensive line and, like, our offense style, because we have run-heavy offense, and a bunch of great backs came through here, set a bunch of records and everything. They're just a blessing to be at a school where they run the ball, and um, they always take care of their running backs and just come um, from behind a bunch of legends. And AJ, he's real close to the, um, the record and everything, but that's, I'm happy for him and everything, but we just got to keep focus on, keep winning, and keep driving, So, but I'm happy for him. Thank you. Santa, pretty straightforward question. Uh, for you guys, considering two weeks ago, how much of this was just a pride performance? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you know, the last two weeks or so have been kind of We've had a chip on our shoulder, you know, uh, coming in every day for practice. Had that sort of mindset where we have to, you know, the, we have to be able to help this team out. You know, like you can't you can't do what we do and expect to win. Um, you know, two weeks ago, and um, this is just a great, you know, it's a testament to our hard work, and you know, hope, we're hoping to keep that going forward. Hey, Tanner, back to the first quarter. Two three and outs, a pick six, and a goal line stand at the one. I guess the question is, is that the most inspirational 15 minutes you've played here? Yeah, I mean, guys are bowing up. You know, you saw like our defense has some guts. I know, you know, we have the potential. You know, we've shown what we can do. Um, we just have to be consistent and, and do that on a, on a night to night basis. Um, yeah, that was incredible. I, I've never seen anything like that. Um, but it, it was great. We just had to be more consistent. Also, in terms of this, you talk a lot about developing the talent you have when you're young, when you're playing for them. But when you see, like, Jake come over fifth, or uh, the line come over sack, or that, like, it feels like there are steps being made by a lot of different players in this game. Did that, did that give you the same thing? Absolutely. Um, I mean, these guys are, are coming in, and, you know, they're working hard every day, and, we're trying, we've been trying to bring them along for the past you know, year or so now. So it's, it's great to see these guys really step up and you know, find themselves a little bit. And you know, Jason had an incredible play. Sheeta, you know, you know, everybody was hyped up on Sheeta at the beginning of the season. I knew Sheeta was going to be like this. Um, but um, he hasn't quite had his opportunities yet. But <clears throat> I think he's going to be, you know, he, he's going to be a great player going forward. And <clears throat> we're very proud of, of our young guys for sure. So I'll make it quick. Max has his helmet in their quarterback's uh, chest, and his ball <laughs> goes in the air. Like, what are you thinking when you see that? Uh, just drive my receiver, and once I get there, you know, get my eyes back, you know, just have good eye discipline and not look back too early and just make it play on the ball, to be honest. And then also, I mean, the same thing for what I asked Tanner was like, this had to be in some, way, in some sense a pride performance, but especially for you, like, where do you think this kind of leads you after, you know, watching the tape today a little bit from the year you uh, For me personally? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, we just preach on getting better every week. And, you know, especially me, as being a young guy, you know, I registered last year. And just getting more feel for the game, more experience, you know, and, like, the people around me are definitely helping me with that. You know, Tanner, Max, like, the leaders of our defense, obviously, and Brandon, Sebastian, Mehdi, all those guys, you know, they're definitely helping me with that. And it's just been easy with those guys around me. 
And on those two goal line stands, <coughs> look, I think they were 0 for 6 passing. I just wanted to comment on your red zone pass protection. Uh, you know, their do, uh, our D-line, you know, they fought all game. You know, the reason I even had an interception, I mean, if, if y'all saw the play, quarterback got beat up. I mean, like, the D, our D-line is just, you know, the penetration we were creating today, you know, they play relentless and, you know, yeah. How important is a game like today when you have Clemson next week on the road, prime time? Is it, is it significant to have a game like this going into that type of environment, knowing you can tell yourselves this is what we're capable of one week before? Uh, yes, definitely. I think we know what we're uh, capable of, but like Tanner said, you know, we just got to stay consistent and just compete. You know, it's all about competing. You know, there's nothing this team can't do. You know, I, I love my team. There's nothing we can't do. We just got to compete. Uh, Max has been making plays nonstop this year. What do you like as a teammate? What, what makes him so special for you personally? Max, I mean, Max is that's, that's like my big brother. Well, he is my big brother. You know, like I look up to that kid. And when I'm out there on the field with Max, it's just like it's just different. You know, the energy's different. He just you don't want to let a guy like that down. You know what I mean? Anything else, Jason? Jason, thank you. We're gonna wrap things up with John Phillips. John, I don't know if you're in here, but David Bailey, when we talked about that run play where he broke out of that scrum, he credited secondary blocking. Uh, could you, what is that? What is that? I mean, <laughs> well, <clears throat> secondary blocking is uh, in terms of the second level. You talk about defensive lines, the first level, second levels. Uh, in this case, the four linebackers they had down. And um, that first one, he. He did all on his own. I don't know what he, I'm not sure what he's talking about. He broke four or five, <laughs> he broke four or five tackles and just wouldn't go down and ran all the way to the end zone. That one, that one was on him. Uh, you're at O-Line U, what is known as, you've always had a tradition of Boston College for great offensive linemen. Being here and getting developed here, does that feed on itself and does that help sustain itself? Uh, could you explain that a little more? Well, like, uh, for one thing, does it make you consider coming to Boston College more when you see a tradition like that? And then when you get here, do you feel like you have to hold yourself to a really high standard? Absolutely. Uh, it was one of the big things I, I personally considered. Uh, I knew the, the hype or whatever the legend, you call it, the tradition of the O-line you. And uh, um, when you become a part of it, you get there, it's an instant brotherhood. I mean, guys bring you in under their wing, and uh, you know, year after year, you get better and better. And when you get in a position where you're one of the older guys and you set the standard for the U, it's a huge honor. And not only that, it's a, it's call it a pressure, but it's for me, I, the thought of letting that standard drop in any sort of way is un, unbearable. A uh, big storyline coming in was, I mean, obviously NC State came in with the ACC's best rushing defense in terms of yardage. Can you talk about what it was like, I mean, as offensive line, uh, 60 run plays versus 15 pass, you guys were just pushing forward. Mm -hmm. What was it like out there, and how satisfying was that performance? Well, all week, uh, you know, the coaches made it clear that uh, we knew how, exactly how good they were, and uh, they did an unbelievable job of getting us ready, getting us the looks and everything we needed for the game, the game plan itself. And uh, when we got out there, it was just like it was in practice. We got out there, and we knew what we had to do. And, um, we started having success as the game went on, and we really started to feed into that. And um, I think that's when <coughs> AJ and uh, David really started hitting their groove. And uh, you know, when they get rolling, they're really hard to stop. AJ and David both talked about uh, what a great line it is to run behind. Uh, what makes them good guys to block for? What makes them good at taking advantage of you guys? Um, I would say how they are as people. You know, it's one thing to say, you know, you're going to go out and spill it for your team. But, you know, you go out there and like, like I saw in the, uh, both of the couple long runs, you know, David gets hit, spins off the first guy, gets hit by a second guy, keeps going. You know, I mean, they're all, they're, you know, they're putting their all out there and getting hit by five, six guys and refusing to go down until they get tackled by, you know, essentially the entire defense. So, you know, when you're blocking for someone that you know is going to give you that effort every time, it makes it all the worth it. His comment on the way Dennis managed the game and also his decision making with the ball when the plays weren't there. Okay, I'm sorry, can you say that again? No, just, just the way Dennis managed the game and then, you know, on those rollouts when there was nobody there, he knew mm -hmm. enough to get rid of the ball. Good decision making. Yeah, Dennis, Dennis played a great game. Um, you know, he, uh, 
he has kind of a natural like moxie if you call it he takes command of the team and you know he's just one of those people you want to be around and uh you know when he he ran it on that for whatever it was the third down and got the first down for us and we, i think we went on to have a 99 yard drive on that and it was huge for the game but uh he did a great job today john thank you thank you john. thank you